Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome back to Esther's Song of Praise. I hope that all of you are having an amazing Monday. It is cold and it is snowing, so I hope that wherever you are, you are somewhere that is warm, safe, and dry. The reason why I say safe, I always throw that in there, is because it's so important with the end times that we're living in, the state of the world today, I pray for safety for each and every one of you. My heart just goes out to anyone out there who is hurting, who is struggling. Just know that I'm praying for you, that the Lord loves you, and I'm trusting and believing in his sovereignty and standing on his word. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into the book of Galatians chapter three. I'm going to pray, ask the Lord to bless his word, and then we'll jump right in. Lord God, we worship you and we thank you for another day. Father God, we just ask that despite all the turmoil going on in the world, Lord God, that we would remember that you were on the throne, Father, that you love us, that you are our Heavenly Father. Lord God, I ask that anyone who is hurting, anyone who is struggling, whatever the case may be, Lord God, whatever prayers on their hearts, Father, I ask that they would give them to you, Lord God, give you all of their cares and their troubles, feelings of despair, whatever it may be, Father. We ask that you will bless your word today, Lord God. Let it continuously refine us and help us to be more spiritually astute, insightful, aware, and mature, Lord God. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. The book of Galatians, chapter 3. Faith or works of the law. You foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you? Before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed as crucified. I would like to learn just one thing from you. Did you receive the spirit by the works of the law or by believing what you heard? Are you so foolish after beginning by means of the spirit? Are you now trying to finish by means of the flesh? Have you experienced so much in vain? If it really was in vain, so again, I ask, does God give you his spirit or work miracles among you by the works of the law or by, by, by you, by your believing what you heard? So also Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. Understand then that those who have faith are children of Abraham. Scripture foresaw that God would justify the Gentiles by faith and announce the gospel in advance to Abraham. All nations will be blessed through you. So those who rely on faith are blessed along with Abraham, the man of faith. For all who rely on the works of the law are under a curse. As it is written, cursed is everyone who does not continue to do everything written in the book of the law. Clearly, no one who relies on the law is justified before God because the righteous will live by faith. The law is not based on faith. On the contrary, it says the person who does these things will live by them. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who is hung on a pole. He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Spirit, the law and the promise. Brothers and sisters, let me take an example from everyday life. Just as no one can set aside or add to a human covenant that has been duly established, so it is in this case. The promises were spoken to Abraham and to his seed, Scripture does not say and to seeds, meaning many people, but and to your seed, meaning one person, who is Christ. What I mean is this, the law introduced 430 years later does not set aside the covenant previously established by God and thus do away with the promise. For if the inheritance depends on the law, then it is no longer then it no longer depends on the promise, but God in his grace 
gave it to Abraham through a promise. Why then was the law given at all? It was added because of transgressions until the seed to whom the promise referred had come. The law was given through angels and entrusted to a mediator. A mediator, however, implies more than one party, but God is one. Is the law therefore opposed to the promises of God? Absolutely not. For if a law had been given that could impart life, then righteousness would certainly have come by the law. But scripture has locked up everything under the control of sin. So that was promise. So that what was promised being given through faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. Children of God. Before the coming of this faith, we were held in custody under the law, locked up until the faith that was to come would be revealed. So the law was our guardian until Christ came, that we might be justified by faith. Now that this faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. So in Christ Jesus, you are children of God through faith. For all of you are baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. May the Lord bless the reading of his word today. So this uh, chapter was a bit more difficult than previous uh, letters written from Paul. But I think that, you know, he really wanted to send the point home to the church members in Galatia that you cannot earn or strive um, to gain salvation through the works of the law. Just, you know, just inherent to us as human beings having been born with a sin nature and just, you know, the law being as complex as it is, um, no one person can fulfill righteousness through the law in our own efforts, right? I mean, that would just, everything, that would just, you know what I mean? If you've ever said, you know, a bad word or thought a bad thought or whatever the case may be, right? Um, as human beings, you cannot earn your salvation. And if we could then the sacrifice of Jesus Christ would be null and void. It would have been in vain, right? But again, the premise that he's saying is that once we accept the gift of, of um, redemption, of righteousness, of salvation through Christ Jesus, then we are saved through faith right here. These last few verses are my favorite because they pretty much you know, sum up what Paul is saying throughout this entire chapter. So he says, you know, so in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith, right? Not by works, but through faith. For all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. We literally put him on like, you know, someone asked me a question about the whole armor of God. I feel like this speaks to that as well, right? Spiritually clothe ourselves in Christ Jesus. We're covered and protected by him. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free. There is neither male and female. I love that, right? Because all of these identity markers are the reason why there's so much, you know, turmoil going on, not only just right now in the times that we're living in, but throughout history. You know what I mean? There's always been these, you know, religious wars and racial wars and gender wars and but, you know, again, the Lord, you know, he gave us prophecy. The Bible tells us in the last days, there are going to be wars and rumors of wars. So unfortunately, that's the way of the world. But in Christ Jesus, there is no Jew, no Gentile. There is no slave nor free. There is no male or female. We're just all children of God for you are all one in Christ Jesus. I love that. So simple and inclusive. Um, if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs, according to that promise. I love that. You guys remember, I don't know 
how many of you went to Sunday school? <laughs> I know I did when I was a kid in the song, Father, Father Abraham had many sons and many sons have Father Abraham and I am one of them and so are you. So let's just praise the Lord. And we went through all of the different, you know, um, limbs and it was an exercise pretty much to, you know, incorporate kids and kind of have fun with them. Um, while in Sunday school or, or Bible school, um, vacation Bible school as well, we sang that song, but it's so true. It incorporates Galatians 3 here, right? We are all children of the Lord and heirs according to the promise, right? In faith. So with that being said, I hope that was a blessing to you guys. Let me know your favorite verses in the comment section. If you guys have any prayer requests, I'd love to, um, or questions, I'd love to hear from you. Please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and I will talk with you in the next one. Take care, guys. Be blessed. Goodbye.